Hey, what's going on gang? Welcome to your 40 second Vue.js tutorial and in this video I want to talk about route parameters. Okay, so before we dive into any code, I just want to talk about what route parameters are. So imagine you've got a blog and you go to a specific blog post, right? Then the route might look something like this, forward slash blog, forward slash one, two, three. And this one, two, three is the unique ID of that one particular blog you're viewing. Same goes if you go to forward slash uh, blog forward slash 500, you will get back a blog page which looks identical to this one in terms of structure and layout, but we're getting different content. It's a different blog, right? So this thing right here that changes is known as a route parameter. And we kind of tell Vue.js it's a route parameter by giving it this syntax, a double dot, a colon, and then the name of that route parameter. So if we want to set up a route parameter, for one of our routes, it's pretty simple. We go to our routes file and we define a new route object like this. Then for the path, we can say forward slash blog, forward slash whatever our route parameter is called. We're gonna call it ID because we're working with blogs and each blog is gonna have a unique ID. And then we say which component we want to load up for this URL, okay? So it's gonna be a single blog component. So no matter what number a user types in here, and hit enter in the address bar of the browser, we're gonna still get up this single blog component. But then we wanna show different blogs dependent on what the user types here, what number, right? Because each blog will have a unique ID. So how do we do that? Well, in this single blog component, we can detect our route parameters and we can handle it. So if someone comes to forward slash three, we could detect that, grab the three, then make a HTTP request for the correct resource. So we could find a blog post on a database with the unique ID of three, and then load it into this component, right? So it's the same component for all different blogs, but we're just loading in a different blog dependent on what the user types in here. Okay then, so the first thing I wanna do is add in that route to our routes.js file. So comma, and then let's do another object. And the path is going to be this time forward slash blog forward slash then the route parameter name, which is going to be ID. OK, so the component we want to load up is going to be the single blog component and not single blog, single blog. And we've not imported that yet. So let's import it. So we'll just copy this, paste it down below, and it's going to be called single blog. Same over here. And we've not actually created this component yet. So let's save this and go ahead and create this now. So in your components, do a new file and we'll call this single blog dot view. And in here we need a template first of all. So how are we going to display this single blog? Well, I want to do a div to surround it all first of all. So I'll say div and we're going to give this an ID and this is going to be equal to single blog. So we'll say single hyphen blog. And inside this div, we want a title of the blog, so h1. And we're going to dynamically output stuff in here later on. For now, let's just leave it blank. And then underneath, an article tag where we're going to output the body of the blog. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make our object for this component. So inside a script tag, we'll export default this object okay and then inside here we're going to create some data so first of all we need to say data and then inside this we need to return an object so we'll return an object with our data properties now we're going to have an id and i'll come back to this in a minute so i'll just set it to null for the time being and then also a blog object which after we've reached out to the server and grabbed our data. We're gonna store all of the blog information such as the title and the content in this object, right? So this ID right here, this is what we want to grab from the URL. So if they go to forward slash blog forward slash 500, we want this to be 500. So we need to access that route parameter. And we can do that pretty easily in Vue.js by saying this dot then dollar sign route and we can do this because we've got view router installed and we can then access a property called params and then the name of our parameter. Now we called this 
ID. So whatever name is there minus this colon, right? So we can say dot ID, and that is going to grab that route parameter from the URL and it's going to store it in here. So when we come to make a request now, we know which resource to go and get. Okay. So after we've done the data, let us now do the created lifecycle hook because what we're going to do is go out and grab some data. And it's always good to put it in this created lifecycle hook when the component has been created. So to do that, we'll say this dot HTTP. We've seen this already. This is how we go and grab some data using the get method. And we want to place in the URL right here. Now we're going to use the JSON placeholder again. So the URL for that I've got on my GitHub repository. You can go and grab it. It's lesson 42. I'm going to paste it in right here. So we're going to forward slash posts. And then to get a single post from here, what we need to do is pass in the ID of the post, for example, 65 right here. Now we don't want to hard code it in this string because then we're just getting one post all of the time, right? So instead what we want to do is tack on this thing right here that we've grabbed from the URL. So we can just concatenate that by saying plus this dot ID. Okay. And that's going to grab this property right here. So now if we go to forward slash blog forward slash 200 and this grabs that 200, so it's stored in ID. This is going to get the resource forward slash posts forward slash 200. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so this returns a promise, which means we can tack on dot then. So when this action finishes right here, the function inside dot then is going to fire. And inside this function, we're going to get back some data, right? So we can pass through the data right here. So this data we can set equal to this thing right here. So we're storing the data we get back inside this blog object. So we'll say that. So first of all, I'll say this dot blog is equal to data and it's the body property on the data we get back that we want. And I'll just demonstrate that now. So let me just say um, console.log and then we'll log the data to the console. Now, before I preview this in a browser, I just want to tack on my comma there because I totally forgot before. So I'll save this now. And if we go to forward slash blog, then forward slash some kind of ID, we'll say 20, then we should in the console see this data right here that we're logging. So let's have a look in the console and we see this response right here. And down here, I said this dot blog is equal to data dot body. So this property right here, whatever is in here, I'm setting equal to this, right? So we're storing each one of these properties, body ID, title and user ID in this blog object now. So we could access them and output them right here to the template. So let's do that. Let's output the title and the body. So I'm going to say double curly braces and then blog dot title and underneath the body. So the content. So blog dot body and we'll save that and let's have a look. And now we see that blog right here. OK, cool. So just a quick one. I've already added these styles right here. This single blog style, just dead simple. Match width of 960 pixels and a margin of zero and auto. That's what's centralizing it on the page right there. Cool. So this is really good. Now, if we go to a different URL each time, for example, 22, we're going to get back a different blog. All right. So 30 a different blog. Cool. So this is very good, but really a user is not going to type in the ID in the address bar. What they're probably going to do is look at the blogs right here and click on one of them and that's going to take them to a blog, right? So we need to kind of bake that functionality into this application. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is go to our show blogs component right here and we need to add a link in to each blog to go in direct to that blog, right? So how are we going to do this? Well, let's add this around the H2. So if they click on the H2, then they go to the block. First thing I want to do is just get rid of this rainbow directive right here. OK, so let's add on the router link now. So router hyphen link and then we'll put the closing tag at the end. So around about here and then we want to say two equals somewhere. All right. So where do we want to go? Well, we want to go to forward slash blog and then to forward slash whatever ID they put in or whatever ID this is, right? So to do that, we're going to have to use some data binding because we're going to dynamically output the ID. Remember, we store the ID 
in the blog, right? So in each blog right here, we have access to that ID property. So what we can say is v hyphen bind to, and then this is gonna be a string first of all in here, this first part, because it's just forward slash blog, that's kind of hard coded, right? And then what we're gonna do is tack on, so let's get rid of that. We're gonna tack on the ID, so that's blog.id. So each time we go around in this for loop, we're outputting the blog.id, okay? So if we save that now, and check this out in a browser. We can see now these are links. So if we click on one of them, then we should go to that page. However, this is not working. Here it is, just took a while to load. Okay, cool. So if we click on a different blog, we get that one. Pretty cool, right? So now we have set up our links from this blog page here to individual blogs using route parameters.